What is it that allows this 150,000-pound Boeing 737-800 aircraft to fly? You've probably seen these large jet aircraft before, but have you ever thought about that exact question? What makes it so this 130-foot aircraft can climb thousands and thousands of feet into the air? Is it the two jet engines, both of which produce around 27,000 pounds of thrust? Or could it be the massive 112-foot wingspan? So what is it about this aircraft that allows it to fly? Well, you're about to find out on the aerodynamics of flight. To find our answer, we'll climb into the smaller Cessna 172 SP Skyhawk. It may not be a 150,000 pound jet, but the same principles apply. Most people probably understand that on an airplane, the wings are what allows it to fly, while the propeller or jet engines drive it forward. This is a good base of knowledge for your average Joe, however, a pilot should know there is much more to it than just that. In total, there are four forces that act on an airplane while in flight. These four forces are lift, thrust, weight, and drag. We'll start with lift and work our way from there. Now, the wing itself doesn't generate lift. It's more about the shape of the wing. The wing is shaped like an airfoil. In normal forward flight, wind passing over the wing, called relative wind, is what helps the airfoil generate lift. When air is moving across the airfoil, it is forced to move faster across the top than it is along the bottom. The slower moving air across the bottom puts more pressure upwards on the wing than the faster moving air across the top. This in turn creates lift. This is known as Bernoulli's principle. So while the wings are creating the force of lift, which is pulling the aircraft up, they also have the force of thrust pulling the aircraft forward. This is created by the propeller. So you can say that lift and thrust are two forces helping the airplane fly. Now let's look at the other side of that, the two forces that counteract these two. Those forces would be weight and drag. First we'll look at weight. The material used to build this aircraft, along with the pilot and baggage weight, known as payload, and the fuel weight, all make up gross weight. Gross weight, along with gravity, all act as weight pulling down on the aircraft. In order for an airplane to fly, the lift generated by the wings must be equal to or greater than the weight of the aircraft. If your aircraft is over gross weight, and your wings cannot produce enough lift to get you off the ground, the results can be disastrous. Under Flight Simulator 10, in the Free Flight menu, the Fuel and Payload button can take you to the settings to adjust the gross weight of your aircraft. Your payload, which is your pilots and your baggage, plus your fuel, plus your empty weight will equal your gross weight. You can see that this 737-800 is just under the max gross weight. Opposite of thrust is drag. Drag is created simply by the aircraft's existence. An object's natural desire to resist moving through a fluid, such as air or water, is called drag. The effect of drag can best be demonstrated by putting a camera on the tail of the aircraft. Now you notice that the camera shakes pretty violently. This is because of the air pushing against the camera. The camera naturally wants to flow with the air and fall away from the aircraft. But here at Gear Down FS, we're smart enough to know that if you don't strap that camera down tight, you'll never see it again. Oh. <laughs> On second thought, maybe we could tighten those up just a little bit more. But what a perfect example of drag. Now, just like before with lift and weight, thrust must be equal or greater than drag in order for an airplane to fly. Okay, so let's recap. Lift is the force created by the airfoil shape of the wing. Gravity, along with the gross weight of the aircraft, acts as a weight pulling down. The lifting force pulling up must be equal to the weight pulling down in order for an aircraft to fly. Thrust is produced by the propeller or jet engine, 
pulling air through the system and moving the aircraft forward, thus creating more lift on the airfoil. Drag is the natural force of an object resisting movement through a fluid, like air. In order for an aircraft to fly, thrust must be equal to drag. So, the two rules that govern whether an aircraft is able to fly or not are thrust equals drag and lift equals weight. So, do you think you're ready to explain how this large 737-800 manages to fly? Follow along with me as I explain the aerodynamic forces acting on the 737 as it takes off. Notice right now how the aircraft is not flying, obviously. You can say that the lift generated by the wings is not equal to the weight. It is actually less than weight right now. However, once the aircraft taxis onto the runway and begins applying thrust, the relative wind, which is the wind passing over the airfoil, increases, thus producing a stronger lift effect. Okay, so the 737 is applying power, creating more thrust. Right now, thrust is greater than or equal to drag. However, lift is still less than weight at this point. With enough speed, the relative wind flying over the wings is beginning to create lift. While we begin to rotate, you'll notice that we are not quite lifting off the ground yet. This is because the lift force is not quite yet strong enough to get us off the ground. However, it doesn't take long after that point for lift to be greater than or equal to weight, therefore lifting us off the ground and getting this giant beast into the air. As long as these two rules stay true, the aircraft will continue to fly and safely reach its destination. This has been Garth with Gear Down FS. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.